Amen. All right. I think I'm ready to preach the word of the Lord. I'm going to read today from the book of Acts chapter 2. This is Pentecost Sunday. And we are a Pentecostal church. And we want Pentecost to happen today. I feel like we've had a little Pentecost already. And I want to preach about Pentecost today from Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And when, let me say this, uh, uh, Glory, where's Glory? Glory is home from college and uh, looking good. Good to see Glory. And good to see our visitors. We have some visitors here today. Some uh, have said they wanted to get a touch from God today. And you can. Don't be denied. Don't leave without what you came for. The days are short, folks. It's time to get right with God and, and get the victory. Now, reading from Acts chapter 2. And verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's lift our hands and ask the Lord to let the Holy Ghost fall in this place like He did in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed is the name of the Lord. We're asking God for your anointing to fall and for the Spirit of God to fall in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Speak to us, Lord, every one of us. Let us get what we need today in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. You may be, no, that's, that's not my hanky. That's a, that's a prayer cloth. We're going to pray for that after church. Uh, you may be seated while I'm looking for my hanky. I'm not sure where it went. I, I don't think I went over there. Uh, for our web friends, we're having a hanky hunt. All right. <clears throat> so I'll use one of these prayer cloths. <laughs> you, you don't want this one after church. Make sure... <laughs> Make sure you don't choose this one. We are, we are going to pray for Sister Bridget's friend, and uh, we have a prayer cloth. We're going to anoint it with oil, and she's very sick, and she's asked us to pray, and we're going to do that in our prayer service in the prayer pit after church, uh, after I'm done preaching. Well, praise the Lord. I want to preach today on uh, the Old Testament Pentecost. The Old Testament Pentecost. We are very familiar what the New Testament Pentecost is all about. The New Testament Pentecost starts right here in Acts chapter 2. It is a very pivotal point in 
the formation of the church. In fact, it is not an overstretch to say there was no church except for in the mind of Jesus when he said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. There wasn't a church until the day of Pentecost. There was a lot of work there was a lot of preparation, most done by Jesus Christ. Uh, his teaching and his ministry and then the price that Jesus paid on the cross of Calvary. All of that had to be done. Jesus had to pay the price and fulfill the ceremonial law of God which had been in effect for 1,500 years. The shedding of blood of the bulls and the goats and the ashes of the heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifying to the purifying of the flesh. But now, Jesus, the spotless lamb, has shed his blood, has died for our sins. But he has risen from the dead and has been alive now for 50 days. 50 days and they saw the Lord 10 days prior as he ascended into the heavens. And his commandment was, now I've done my part. You go and tarry in the upper room in Jerusalem. And I'm going to pour out the promise of the Father upon you. So we know that this is, there's a lot of work that went into getting to this point. But now, on the day of Pentecost, God's Spirit is going to transform. Transform the lives of the disciples and His believers. And it's not just a transformation for power. It is, it is salvific in content. Up until this point, the Holy Ghost, when it is... Mention in Scripture was an anointing for a specific task. It was, it was a giftedness that was given to people to do specific things. But it was now different. Everybody say different. John chapter 7 and verse 39 says it this way, the Holy Ghost was not yet. And I believe in italics is the word given uh, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost is different from the Holy Ghost that came upon various people in the New Testament or in the Old Testament. You will see Occasionally there were people, especially in uh, the artistry and the gold work uh, and the tapestries of the tabernacle of Moses. The Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon various people. And uh, they were able, through the giftedness, to make beautiful, beautiful works of art. Then there were people that were gifted power, mighty power in battle. They were empowered by the Spirit of God. But now the Holy Ghost is more than just empowerment. The Holy Ghost is now about the regeneration and the reconnecting of the human spirit to the eternal spirit 
of God the Father. Jesus Christ has stretched out his hands and taken God in one and mankind in another and brought them together. And we are reconciled to the holiness and the perfection of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And now Jesus has ascended into the heaven and he has been glorified. There was a period of time that after Jesus had been resurrected from the dead that he was untouchable. He said uh, to uh, Martha or Mary, touch me not for I have not yet ascended unto my Father. So, Jesus had to ascend into heaven. Then later on, he came back and he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and touch me. He had been glorified. And then when Jesus went into the heaven, the last time, he said, I'm going away, but I shall come back. And he said, My spirit, I have been with you, but I'm going to be in you. I'm standing beside you today, but I'm going to be inside of you one of these days. We know all of these things about the New Testament Holy Ghost. But where is the roots of Pentecost? And what is the significance? God doesn't do anything by accident. Everything has symmetry. Everything is a type and a shadow of things to come. There are three major festivals. I like that word. Three major festivals in the Old Testament that God made a command performance for all of his people to go to and be at Jerusalem at least three times a year. I read the scripture this morning. It said the Lord said, way back, I want everybody to meet me in Jerusalem and appear before me in Jerusalem Uh, three times a year. And it was in concurrence concurrence with three major festivals. Now there are seven feasts in the Old Testament. We're not going to preach on all of those. Four of them were minor celebrations, but there were three major celebrations. Number one was the Passover. This was the reflection of coming out of Egypt, of being delivered from the tyranny of bondage. And that was to be remembered on the day that it happened into perpetuity. There was a weekly remembrance, but then there was a great time of celebration of the Passover. It's during this time that Jesus took the disciples to the upper room. Now this upper room was used for the dinner and then was also then later uh, the place where the Holy Ghost fell in that upper room. And on the day of the Passover, stay with me, I'm giving you some background here. Uh, On the day of the Passover, the Lord takes wine and takes a piece of bread and he says, now we're not just looking back, but we are now today instituting what the Passover is. I'm your Passover. 
This is my body and this is my blood. And it's going to be spilt and broken for you to come out from under the bondage and the tyranny of sin. We can never get past the Passover. Even as Gentiles, that is one of the sacraments of the Gentile church that Paul institutes at the hand of God. And he says to the Gentiles, I know you're not Jews. I know you're not from Israel by blood. But you are a part of spiritual Israel by the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus Christ. And you need to celebrate the Passover, which is my body that is broken for you, and my blood which is spilled for you. Second major feast was the beginning of Arvian. It's the Old Testament RVN, recreational vehicle. The Lord said once a year we're going to have a festival called the Feast of Tabernacles or the Festival of Tents. See, everything goes back to God. And He said, You live in nice houses. You dwell in walled cities. But one week, we're going to all move out of our houses. And we're going to dwell in tents for one reason. You are strangers and pilgrims on a journey. And this is to help you to remember that this world is not your home but that you are looking for a city whose builder and maker is God just like your father Abraham. Oh, we need to be reminded here. We are strangers and pilgrims. We can't get too comfortable. Don't put your roots down too deep. There's a call coming. I said there's a trumpet sound that's going to sound soon. (coughs) And we need to be reminded of our transitorial nature. Amen. You know those astronauts that... uh, flew out of the sky, up into the sky and into outer space. Somebody said, it's a good day to be an astronaut. All this uh, violence, all this ugly stuff going on, it's a good time to get out of the world. Folks, I want to tell you, I know you want everything to go back to the way it was. I don't know if we're going to get there. This could be the turning. I'm just saying don't put your hope in the world. Don't put your hope in the politics. Don't put your hope into money. When this plague started, people were afraid. Hmm? What happened? All kind of interest in the church. I just think that's round one. We want it to go back. I don't want it to go back. I don't want the world to get comfortable. I want God to keep his foot on the pedal. Do what you have to do, Lord, to stir the souls of people so they'll Turn to God. Well, are you with me today? 
Maybe we need to do some spiritual RVing. We're getting, you know, the handle on COVID. I was listening. There's got five different uh, promising. I heard somebody. Of course, you can hear anything, right? One day they say no mask. The next day they say mask. Uh, the, I, I, I firmly think most people don't know what they're talking. And, oh, my God, I joined Facebook, and I, I want to get off. I'm just saying I didn't know how to pick my friends, and I don't know how to delete, but a de- great deletion is coming. There are people that I don't even know and I don't like. I don't like their spirit. Now everybody's going to be watching. Brother Hurst deleted me. That don't mean we can't be friends, just not Facebook. There's one guy, every time I see him, Oh, don't get me started on Facebook. It's it's a COVID infection. And there's such blabbering. Oh, shut thy mouth, please. Just don't say it. I'm being hindered. Get away, Facebook, get away. What was I preaching on before I got on Facebook? That'll get your victory every time. RV and that didn't help. <laughs> Don't get comfortable in the world. I think, I think another wave is coming and it's not COVID. It's going to be our money. Oh, we've all been doing good. You let God touch the money. And there will be some people seeking out the face of God saying, help me. Somebody said, Brother Hurst, don't preach that. Don't make it come to pass. I'm just saying you need a festival of tents. You need to remember from whence you came and to where you're going and not get so comfortable in this world. Is there anybody that's looking up unto the hills from whence cometh our help, our help? Cometh from the Lord. Is there anybody praying? Oh Lord, come quickly. Yes. <coughs> Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I want to be ready for the coming of the Lord. I want to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And I want as many people as possible to get ready for the coming of the Lord. And sinners don't pray through when things are going well. None of you did. Your world had to be breaking down. There had to be a hunger and a restlessness and a hardship. And you got tired of paying the butcher's bill for sin. And you looked around and said, is there something better? And God sent somebody to say, yeah, I found Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Ghost. And he's a whole lot better. Oh, testify to me right now. Don't you want your family to be saved? Don't you want your workers to be saved? Don't you want the city to be saved? Don't you want California to be saved? Oh, i got to preach a little bit more on this. What are we worried about? He gave Israel manna in the morning and quail to eat at night. And he said, you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat or where you're going to sleep. Or what you're going to wear. I'm saying God's going to take care of his people. (laughs) Hallelujah. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
We need to rearrange our priorities. That's what the Feast of the Tabernacles was for, was to do a, a deal on their mind. And then, last but not least, is this Feast of Pentecost. There's three things about the Feast of Pentecost in the Old Testament that I want to point out. Number one, it is called the Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks. Seven complete weeks. Fifty days. From the Passover to the celebration of the Feast of Pentecost. It's called the Feast of Weeks. It was a period of time of passage. Of course, we know in the New Testament, Jesus was crucified and then rose again. And in those critical 50 days, cemented all of the teachings that he had taught for three and a half years to his disciples who would become the leadership of his church. And then they had one last assembly ten days prior, over 500, and Jesus ascended into heaven and he said, Now go and tarry for the promise of the Father. And the Bible says here in our text, And when the day of Pentecost, was fully come. Then here comes a new time. A, a, a paradynamic shift. It would never be the same. Are you with me? And then there is, there, the, when I was reading and studying this, it said, there really isn't any significant teaching about the Feast of Pentecost that isn't directly connected to the harvest. I thought, well, no wonder, right? Pentecost is about the harvest. At Pentecost... At Pentecost, there was a celebration of the harvest. This part is called uh, the Feast of Harvest. Uh huh. The Feast, I, I need to visit my notes here a little bit. Feast of Weeks, Feast of Harvest. Ah, here it is. And thirdly, the, the Day of First Fruits. It was the Feast of Weeks. It was the Feast of Harvest because it concluded the harvest of the later grains that were grown. Exodus 23 and 16. And it was called the day of, get, get this, first fruits. Now, it started the night before. You needed, here's the ordinance, you need to be in Jerusalem by nightfall. The night before. And you need to purify yourself. Because starting tomorrow is Pentecost. And the day of first fruits was there was grain taken from the harvest and baked into loaves. Two loaves. And then the high priest would come out with those two loaves. And that a very... Uh, important crescendoing moment in the ceremony of the day of first fruits he would take those loaves and wave them before the congregation 
of Israel. And great praise and worship would be made unto God for a bountiful harvest and for God's keeping of his people. But on the day of Pentecost, this year, there was going to be a different kind of first fruits. There was not just going to be loaves this year. There was going to be a beginning harvest of souls being filled with the Holy Ghost. In, go ahead and clap your hands. The Mosaic ordinances provided that on the day of Pentecost, listen to this, it was to be a day of holy convocation in which no manner of work was to be done. You remember when I said all the work had been done prior? The work at Pentecost was not work. It was a gift. If you want Pentecost, you don't have to pay for it. Because Jesus Christ has paid the bill for the feast of Pentecost. And it is a gift to each and every person that wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost of Pentecost. All you have to do is raise your hands and ask the Lord to fill you with His Spirit because the work is done. That's good preaching, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen to this. All. Everybody say all. All. all the able-bodied men of Israel were to be present. No work that day. Everybody at the sanctuary to attend in the service. That's why Peter said, you all need to repent. You must all be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's for everybody, he said in Acts chapter 39. It's for whosoever the Lord our God shall call and to Pentecost he said, let everybody come to Pentecost. Nobody's going to be working in the fields. Everybody's got to get to the house of God because it's Pentecost. Are y'all getting anything out of this? The f it was, perhaps more than any other day, this is probably, history says, post-exile, the most well-attended of the feast. Jews would come, uh, once they were scattered and dispersed after the Babylonian captivity, and uh, they were under the dominion of Gentile nations. They would come from all over. Notice there's a big list. There's 16 different nationalities and countries listed in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. 16 different nations being represented of people that had come into Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And when it was noised abroad, what was happening in the upper room, a great crowd gathered together and they were astonished 
because they saw Galileans speaking perfectly in their language. And they knew enough about the people that they knew that they didn't know that language. But they were supernaturally speaking the wonderful works of God in their language. Way back God separated nations by language. At the Tower of Babel, he shut down the unity of mankind by language. But at Pentecost, God brings all nations back together. He wants everybody to get the Holy Ghost. He wants black, white, brown, yellow. He wants the Indian. He wants everybody, all nations. I wish somebody had preached like we're a church that believes that we got 24 different nationalities represented in this congregation. It's supposed to be an all-nation Holy Ghost. God's bringing us back together. I'll tell you what the world needs. It's a Pentecost that would get rid of all of this division, that would get rid of all of this hate. <clears throat> there is no racism in a Holy Ghost environment. The Holy Ghost pulls us all together. The Holy Ghost makes us love one another. Anybody getting anything out of this message tonight? Today? By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. That ye have love one to another. There is no place for hate in the house of God. And if you say you love God and hate your brother, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. That's James preaching to you today. I'm telling you, I want a Holy Ghost revival to come to California, to come to the country, to come to the cities. Oh, God, let the fire of Pentecost fall upon the America today. Mm. Now, you know, I got up this morning at 5.30, 5.30, and uh, I woke up at 2.30. I heard some thumping, and you know, there's a lot of thumping going on in the world right now, and I thought, oh my God, somebody's breaking in. They're going to get me. And... I mean, I come out of that bed, and I thought, oh, my God, I don't know where my shotgun shells are at. I don't even know where my twenty-two ammunition is at. And then I said, well, maybe it's not as bad. And I snuck down the hall. I heard somebody banging on the house. Don't anybody get no ideas. I'm going to find those shotgun shells. I'm going to find them. And I snuck down, I, I was peeking out, and I couldn't find I couldn't find where the thumping was coming from. And I went back, it was at 2.30. And I laid down and listened for three hours. By the second hour is like this. And all this, these three hours. From 2.30 to 5.30, I prayed off and on, all this stuff going on in the world. And I prayed for you, 
I prayed for the service because God can do more. Folks, my secret is the Holy Ghost. Somebody asked me a while back, how do you build a great church? Well, I'm telling you right now, it's get a move of the Holy Ghost among the folk. Get the saints to praying. Get the church to speaking in tongues and being full of the Holy Ghost. That's where you get love and joy and peace and goodness and mercy and strength and long-suffering. All kind of good stuff come out of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So, finally I gave up and I got up at 5.30. What did I start telling you that for? And uh, I was here at the church by 6. 6 o'clock. So, it just reminds me I need a nap. Now, I find myself forgetting things nowadays. Oh, yes, this is Pentecost Sunday. For a minute, I thought it was Easter. Last night, I thought it was trick-or-treat or or something. I don't know. Really, where was I at? The world needs God. That's true. You don't know where I was at. Help us, Jesus. How good is the Holy Ghost? Have a move of God. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. Come on, maybe I'll get it. Lord, help that old gray-haired preacher up there. Oh, I got another good point. Here's the deal. Here's what I want to say. I'm almost done, I think. I could go back and talk about that banging around. I got, oh, I got up. That's right. That's it. That's it. Boom. I am as sharp as ever. Thank God for what is it I take? Thank God for plexus. Hallelujah. He's in the element now. So I, I got up and... I stopped by McDonald's, got a cup of coffee. This is quarter till six. Said hi to the lady. She just looked at me. And, and I, I got to the church, and I had a few minutes. I'm still waking up or trying to fall asleep, whatever you want to say. And I got on Twitter. Now, I got Twitter dialed in. I only have 37 uh, I only follow 37 people. See, I weeded it down. And I'm fixing to delete some of them. They act like they got a word from God every day. No, you don't. You don't need to say something every day. Here I, you can tell the quarantines wore me out. But I saw, I punched on the theme of the day, and it said Pentecost Sunday. And so I I punched on it, and I'm telling you, everybody's bragging about Pentecost today. Every denomination. Because here's the deal. Everybody believes it is universally accepted that the church started on the day of Pentecost. Catholics believe that. Baptists believe that. Uh, Methodists believe that. Pentecostals believe that. Charismatics believe everybody believes that the church started on Pentecost. And so there was ads from from the Catholic Church. Happy Pentecost birthday to the Catholic Church, the one apostolic church of the world. Here's the deal. Everybody universally accepts that the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost and that was the beginning of the church. But... Today, they don't believe you can get it. They believe they got it. 
but they don't believe it's for us today. Now, I was reading an article starting in the beginning of the 20th century in Topeka, Kansas in 1900. A group of Bible school students were praying and fasting 10 days prior. And they were in a prayer meeting and as the night became morning, the Holy Ghost fell and there were several people who received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Modern day church. Everybody, again, most everybody goes back to this event and says this is the Lat, the beginning of the latter day outpouring. The former reign was the early church. They were very successful in converting the world until at its peak over half of the world in the disciples' day and up till a hundred years after the day of Pentecost one in every two were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, but then the church went into the dark ages. It never did go extinguish. It never was out completely, but it did go underground. There were different manifestations that you can see back there's the Welch Revival, the Cornish Revival. There's the Puritans. There's the Quakers. When you study, all of these had some manifestation of the Holy Ghost. But most historians say that the latter day rain fell 1900. It's documented that from that day till now, well over 100 million people have been filled with the Holy Ghost, evidenced with speaking in tongues. Really, me saying they don't believe you can have it, Really, that's a dated thing. Because now every denomination has a branch of Holy Ghost. Catholic Church has a branch where you can get the Holy Ghost. The Baptist, they used to, Baptists used to say the Holy Ghost is not for you, but too many of them got it. So now they say, well, that's a Holy Ghost Baptist Church. Or that's a Holy Ghost Methodist Church. Or that's a Holy Ghost... The charismatic movement started in the mid-60s. People started getting the Holy Ghost from all of the mainline denominations back in the 60s. So you got all kinds of people that have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to tell you one more thing about this, this, um, this feast of Pentecost. Listen to this. The feast of the harvest, it celebrated the ending. The ending of the harvest. The harvest of the later grains. Hundred million plus People have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. But one of the symbols of Pentecost was to celebrate the last bit of grain that could be harvested. Ladies and gentlemen, if the Holy Ghost was began to be poured out and the latter rain started in 1900, where are we now in 2020? 
I suspect it's in the last gathering of late grain. It is the harvest of summer fruit. It is the, the, the harvest that has been blasted by the sun, weathered by the storms, picked on by the birds, but yet there is a harvest to be had. You can't find good people anymore. They've got all kind of baggage. they got all kind of stuff in their life. But God is still reaching for the last of the grain to be gathered into His. Sinner, there's hope for you today. After a hundred million people have received the Holy Ghost, you can too experience Pentecost. Raise your hands and praise God. Let the Holy Ghost come. Open your mouth and begin to speak in tongues. Those of you that are watching on the web, raise your hands, open your mouth, and say, Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost of Pentecost. That's it. Let's stand all over the house. Let's praise God. Don't put your hands down until you've spoken tongues. Let the Holy Ghost of Pentecost, let there be a harvest. Come on, backslider. That's the Holy Ghost that's on you right now. You haven't gone too far. You're getting in on the last harvest. But getting in, you are. Come on. Let The Holy Ghost of Pentecost. Fall on you. From the front to the back. From side to side. Let the Holy Ghost fall. Oh, give us a Pentecost today. Come on, church, we need it more now than we've ever needed it before. We need to stand up and be counted and let the world know we still have the Holy Ghost. We still believe in speaking in tongues. And it's not just something we used to do. We do it right now. The Holy Ghost leads and guides us. The Holy Ghost gifts us. The Holy Ghost gives us love and joy and peace. Hallelujah. Come on, if you've lost your peace, get the Holy Ghost and you'll have some fruit of the Spirit of peace.